<clears throat> so last time we talked about WAN 2.1 VASE, using video to video, and how we can use control net in mask editing. Today, we're going to use another method, the start and end frame with WAN VASE. Like all this demo videos where I was using the same motions guider of a character spinning 360 degree, and the frame style are just based on a start frame and optional with an end frame for video generation. As you can see, all these characters are having the same spinning motions with a very coherent style. Even though we have all the motions doing the same actions here, we can still have different frames applied as well. In WAN 2.1 VASE, we can also use start and end frames. A lot of the start and end frame AI models that we've seen before have problems with frame transitioning when we see a lot of morphing. Even though we have very similar start and end frames, it's hard to do very smooth transitions and the background can stay still with one coherent style. And as you can see right here, we got another angle of the character spinning with the same motions, but the start frame is a close-up shot, and then the end frame can create something way different. Even though we don't need an end frame, just let the AI have more freedom like in this one, we just use a start frame to create the motion of the elf walking on the river stream. Now let's check out how we can do that and make very smooth transitions between start and end frames. So in here, I've made two workflows. So basically, go for the simple one first. And as you can see in here, I have reference image one. This is for the start frame. And then I got reference image two, which is for the end frame. Now I've used file paths here. I like to do it this way because I don't want to duplicate those input files in my comfy UI input folder. Moving on to the frame preview, I've merged two frames into this when videos vase start to end frames. Now this is coming from the when videos wrapper node because this one is so convenient. It allows us to make start frame, end frame images, and mask output, which lets us guide the AI on what to do for each frame here. Now I'll run this, and you'll see how that looks in the generated output. In this node, we're going to use the image reference and the image reference mask and put that into the WAN vase. This time, I'll use the native node here because I see that the native node has the potential for expanding and integrating with other AI models together. Furthermore, if you develop the workflow with more expansions, that's why I use the native node here. For the WAN VASE 2 video, we're using the control videos as we're inputting from the image reference. Then the image reference mask, we're putting that for the control mask. And this time, we don't need the reference image here because we already have those reference images inputs in the control video image list. And obviously, we're using what we usually do, set our width, height, and the length of the video. Usually, you can put 81 frames, but I've tried to put 129 frames, which means 5 seconds, and you can use frame interpolation to make it longer, even up to 10 seconds, whichever styles you want. Back to the top here, I've got the video loader and all these settings for how you use the motion guide. Now, this source video loader, this is actually not going to be used for video-to-video -video generation. We're using the videos only for the motion guide for our first and last frames. So therefore, we can have a better presentation for this kind of start and end frame video generation. Or we call that frame interpolation AI model videos. Because lots of times, as we've tested before other AI models that use frame interpolation, when you see those performances between the start and end frames, you will see a loss of morphing. Even though you've got a good image for those input start frames, you'll still have a lot of chances of creating bad quality video. So therefore, using vase in this one, it's more of an improvement, I would say, for how your subjects or any object in the videos are going to present with your desired motions that you have in the video that you input in here. Just like in this case, we've got the woman walking. We're not using this woman, and we're not using the background of this video. We're only using this character's motions. So let's say the hands moving and then walking forward toward the camera. We're using only these motions as a guider. Next, come to the model loader and the torch and sage attention. We're going to use the native node here too. Now I've put the diffusion model and also the GGUF multi-GPU node. So in case you want to use different model files, you can do that as well. The safe tensors, of course, you can load FP16, a larger size, higher floating point model in here to get better quality. For GGUF, it's lower quality, of course. But as I've tested in the last video, we use Fusion X VASE GGUF, and it does show good performance, even though this is a GGUF quantized model. And it shows pretty well results, even at that quantized size. 
so it's up to you to use whichever type of model that is. And here, I just preloaded the LoRa loader in here, in case you have your own styles for the videos that you're generating. So that will take effect from the LoRa styles model as well. Then go to the settings, because we're using Diffusion X Vase and we don't need a very high sampling step in this case. I would just use 12 steps as usual, that's good enough. Some people say 10 steps are also preferable for video generation as well, so it depends on how much computing power you want to spend on video generation. So the other things in here are going to be the same as the way of connecting the WAN 2.1 vase. We pass the conditioning and the latent and the trim latent to the sampler groups. And as I've mentioned, the WAN vase control mask and reference, these three input parameters, can be done in many flexible ways. Come down to here, I've got another group that is currently bypassed. If you enable this group, you can use the motion guider from the videos. So I put the video source videos into here. I set the DW pose for the control net image. And what I did is pass these control net images, each image frame from the video for doing the reference for the control motions. So come back to the frame preview here. I will connect this to the control image. Now pay attention to here, this time we're not using the control net image output from the DW pose directly connected to the WAN vase in here. We're connecting the image reference from the WAN videos vase start to end frames node here. Now I'll show you why it happens like this. This is something different than a normal WAN video vase control input node. So therefore, we're using the control images here for one control net output image. Let's try with this one and you'll see how that looks. So here's the first example that was generated in this video recording, and I have two images from here where I've generated the first pose of the character based on the frame from this video, where I started at the 200th frame, and then I have another 81 frames running, and then the end frame, I was using the end of that period of time, which is the 81st frame from this video clip, which is this pose where you see the hands rising up and holding the hand back. So this pose comes from that one as well, but then I changed that to holding flat flowers. And there's a beautiful environment like this. Start and end frames creations, we see that we've got the mask preview. This is where the fun part is. The start frame and the end frame you see are black colors right here, custom mask. The mask in here, we don't need to create anything. We're telling the AI that it only needs to do its creativity animations in the white color space. So therefore, this in between the start and end frames, all these frames are becoming solid white color. That allows the AI to generate those frames. You know, it's a very basic, simple concept of what frame interpolation is in the AI world here. So we see that we've got the control image that's generated from here. So all these images, you see that the first and the last frames are already embedded in this list. And in the middle of all those frames are the control net DW pose images that are coming from here. We've got the control net and generated those frames as a guider for our character's motions. And these motions are basically coming from our video source videos, which is this woman walking on the beach. And let's resume this video. And you will see that she's going to hold the handbag. But we're going to cut on this part. We only need that part that starts from the beginning where the woman's holding up her arms and then carrying them back. Which I have captured this motion of the arms rising up and the hands holding back at the shoulder. And I changed that to this way, where the woman in my generated image is grabbing the flowers on top and then walking forward to this beautiful area. It can be, you know, making more creativities with the motions rather than just having your video to video that's limited by the form and shape or the video structure. So this is one of the ways of using vase for start and end frames. Another way of using this is that you can even disable the second image reference, which means we're not going to have the end frame input in our frame interpolation. This way, we're not going to have the last image frame embedded in the image list. And also, the mask on the last frame here, it will turn to white color as well. So it will start from the first frame and let the rest of the image frames in here for the AI to generate those motions. So, let's try out this one. We'll have the same image here and then comes the video generation section. In this way, it will be very similar to video to video when we're using the control net guider and reference image for your video generation and using things like DW pose or open pose. You can guide this character on how they're going to walk, how their hands are going to pose, etc. Especially the head going down and then looking up again is all mimicking what I have in my character of the source video. And the other way in here because we're limited or we're using the end frames at the end, 
we have to get something that's close to the last end frame and how they're going to look in order to allow us to have the motions more correlated with the first and last frames. Because let's look at this full page. Our first frame is here, and then the last frame is almost here. When the woman's holding up the flowers with this pose. So we have to, in the middle of this part, use text prompts as well as the help of the control net DW pose to do this whole motion for us and connect it with the text prompts that I have, like the woman holding up the flowers, because the flowers are held in her hands, we have to generate it. And the AI is going to do that by connecting all this context into this video's motion. And then another way, which is giving the AI more freedom without the end frames. And personally, I like this setting for only providing the start frame and then using the control net to do the rest of the video frames, where this will look more natural and smoother for the character, as well as the whole picture of this video. How that looks, you see the backgrounds, especially this flower frame on top, looking more natural than having the woman grabbing the flowers on top here, which doesn't make sense. But then what it is, from the settings of only having the end frames, that we have to do the holding flowers motion. So I'll be more preferring when we're using the start and end frames in one 2.1 vase, we're going to use only providing the first frame, which is good enough like the other rest of the motions. Because the vase is so flexible, as we can use the control net for the frame interpolation. This is totally a game changer for start and end frame video generation as well. So let's say if I'm doing this with more than one control net. So let's say we've got a DW pose. We want to add one more control net because sometimes you're not only having the character walking forward or just walking backward. That's like a robotic movement. There are some times, like my previous examples that I showed, you'll have your character like this and then spinning around and doing all this dynamic motion, different angles of the character. Even the front or the back of the character will be showing as well. In this way, we're going to need another control net for this. Because the DW pose, as you guys have tried this before, you'll notice that the DW pose or open pose do not do well for character turnarounds. So, we're going to use another additional WAN vase to video collaborating with the start and end frames input. And that will be more advanced than just a beginner level of the WAN 2.0 vase using the start and end frame like this. So, for the more advanced way to do that, I've based it on the previous workflow and I added another WAN base to video node here, connecting additional conditions with additional control video inputs here. So this control video input, I'm going to use Depth Anything V2 preprocessor in this way. I'm using Segment Anything. I only want to get the character motions only. I want to get rid of the rest of the backgrounds or anything that's distracting my video output. When you haven't used the segment, it will generate Depth Anything V2 that covers the whole video scene from the loaded video in here because I don't want the shape and those beaches, seawater, the background, the sand on the ground. I don't want this shape. I just need this character that's highlighted and mimicking that motion of the character. So I'll be using applying the segmentation here. It's just a simple way to prompt it to get me the character only. So once I get the character only, it will be processed using depth anything V2, and there I will have only the focus of the character depth map for it to allow running with the DW pose as previously. What we've done, and I put that DW pose in here for, within the same video loader groups here. Just know, you can do your own layout, having other styles or putting that into other individual groups if you prefer. But this is the faster way that I modify the workflow to run in this way. And the same image control reference output that I have in the set node, it doesn't matter how you put that location. The only matter is that you connect those data connections with the right logic. So, you have to think before you apply this, if that logic is correct. So back to here. Once we have the image reference, and this is from the DW pose, and then we've got this one from our second control net, then we can do more complexities of character motions, such as the examples that I showed of the character spinning. I think this is in the AI world. The hardest part to detect a character's front and the back of the character and how that looks. So I also did, you know, different styles and different images and mimic that motion. And it's able to do that in the when video start and end frames. Okay, so we've got the generated result here. As you can see, this is mimicking the spinning around of the character's motion. We're able to use this image that I have based on the video source first image frame. And I generated this image from Flux. You can also use other image diffusion models, such as nowadays we have the Flux contacts. You can use that as well. It's all up to you to create. But then, this workflow demo here, I'm just using Flux, and I pass the image output in here, called the Image Flux Start Frames. So by using this, I'll be dedicating this image for the start frame. Then I'm coming to the Start and End Frames group. I'm choosing the same output values from the Flux group, 
because I'm not using the reference to image from the end frames reference here, it will ignore this input. It doesn't matter. Even if you connect this, you don't have that group operated in this time. It's bypassed. So it will just be an empty connection. But then, we have the control net for the DW pose from here. You will see the DW pose as the output image frames for the reference, and we have very clearly seeing that the character motion spinning around using this DW pose as the guider. And then the second control net, I'm using depth anything V2. It will allow the AI video model to identify which is the front and the back view of the character, such as right now, as you can see it's really clear that there's no problem at all. So spinning around, you know, if you just use the DW pose, it will have the body spinning, and the hat might be like a ghost staying still on the backward of the character's body. That will look awkward and will be a failed video. And I've used 720p resolution in this video. So, therefore, it can generate better resolution for the video output. This time we can see that the face is clear, so that's how we can do that using Vasse to do start and end frames. And also, we can use only the start frame without the control net, just like this. And you can bypass the second when Vasse to video. So in this way, you will only have the reference image in here. And this reference image is coming from what we have in this group. And it will not have those DW pose control net images appear here. And in that scenario, next, I would be generating the scenario like this. It will not have the guider for the character motions. So let's check out how that will look like without the DW pose control net. So you will see obviously in here now, we only have the start frame of the image and then the rest of the image are in the gray color. That means that we will be just like the mask frames here. It allows the AI to do whatever image frames for this video generation, for frame by frame generation. And this way, we won't have the load video for the guider. Instead, it will be looking for something else, other character motions, for the upcoming video generation. So in here, we've got the new video generated. As you can see, the motions are not the same as what we have in the reference video here. Instead of this character spinning around, and we're seeing that and other motions of the character here. What I've generated is another different motion compared with what I had in the first time I tried it with the video reference video as the control motion. It's another style, that's how we can do it with different combinations of input and also having different latent data. Now, one more thing I have to mention is that I've tried an any switch in here for the trim latent. Just by then, I connected like this, and I found out that it caused an error when generating using these connections, using the any switch connecting both trim latent and detecting whichever as the input switch, as I have here. That's showing the generate result. So the last time I connected the any switch like this, it was showing this error of the kernel size problem. It has a greater actual input size. Because this way, I think that the trim latent cannot be handled by the any switch, or maybe I should say the any switch doesn't have the conditions for handling the trim latent input data for this switching method. So if I have this bypass and the latent data output can be used by the any switch, but the trim latent cannot do that. Otherwise, we will cut into this error message because of the ve decode. We will have this message created in this way. So I will be deleting this any switch node so the trim latent has to manually connect it, like the last time that I did in the previous workflow, if you're using the bypass one of the nodes in here. So let's say, in this case, I didn't use the depth anything V2 bypass this node, and I have to connect the trim latent on the top here. So that's how I've done that so far, and it will be updating sometimes when I have more testing about how that goes. So as you can see right here, once I click this run, and when I directly connect the trim latent, it's able to generate and create the output from the VE decode without problems. So that's it for this video, and I hope this is going to inspire you on how to use WAN 2.1 VASE using their method for generating first and last frames in AI videos, like this. Lots of combinations you can try, lots of conditions you can test around with. I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.